Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new, which there's a very high chance that you are, honestly. My name is Ana Clara and I am actually very happy to have you here today. In this video, we're going to talk about the 10 books that I finished reading in January. I am extremely happy with the amount of books that I finished reading. I feel like this was such a fantastic reading month for me. If I am not mistaken, I have four five-star reads this month and I think I have a book that has the potential to make it to my favorite books of the year. So this was such a good way to start off my reading year. I feel like January really reminded me where my reading roots really are and the types of story that I love to read and the types of story that get me excited to pick up a book. So I cannot wait to share all of the books that I read with you right now. I started off the month by finally finishing the Faithful and the Fallen series. I finished reading Wrath. I believe by the time 2024 started, I had around 200 pages left in this book. So I actually did read the majority of it in December, but then finished it in January. I feel like I have already talked about this series so much on my account because it was a series that I discovered in 2023 and it really reignited a passion of mine for high fantasy. I had not actually read a high fantasy book in a very long time and this book really reminded me of ways in which fantasy books can be an extremely fun time so I'm very happy to have read it and to have finished it. But if you are unfamiliar with this series, The Faithful and the Fallen is a pretty tropey series. I would would say and essentially in this world there is this extremely old prophecy that said that at some point in history this enormous war would take place and it's a war between humans giants and gods which is pretty typical high fantasy I think in this war each god would choose a human to be like their representative and essentially one side would be good and one side would be bad we are following so many characters in this series and we are following characters from all sides of this world so we're not only following humans we're not only following uh the good guys we're not only following the bad guys either it's very very interesting to explore so many different povs and to try to understand the reasoning and the minds of these characters as well and i honestly think that in my opinion this was a really really great way to finish off the series this book absolutely shattered my heart i was sobbing by the end of it because you grow attached to these characters you really start to care about them you care about their journey you want to see them succeed that doesn't always happen but i feel like at the end of the day i was happy with the way that this book finished off i have seen some people say that they did not like the ending that it was too tropey for them but because i have not read a lot of high fantasy in my lifetime i was still pretty satisfied with where the story went i don't know if this would be the case if i was more familiar with the genre but since i'm not this made me happy i'm glad i read this series and i'm glad that i can say that i read all of these words yeah <laughs> the next book i finished reading was the guest by emma klein which truly started my journey back with my unhinged girlies i feel like this was the book that really reminded me that i love this subgenre in literature and in this book we are following an extremely messy and extremely complicated main character i would even say that she's no i could definitely say that she's like not a very good person but she has her reasons and you sort of understand why she had to be this way we meet her during a summer that she's staying with this older man that she met at a bar in his very fancy and very like rich people beach house and her and this guy have sort of like a relationship but it's really more of like almost like a sugar baby situation I would say where he wants to have a younger and hot partner and uh, she's just doing what she thinks she's supposed to do for this man but during a dinner party she drinks a little bit too much and ends up doing something that embarrasses this man so he kicks her out of the house she is no longer welcome and he tells her he's going to give her a ticket, a one-way ticket back to the city. But the thing about this character is that she is extremely good. 
at going through loopholes in her mind to convince herself of the narrative she wants to believe of her life, which honestly, I can relate. So she convinces herself that in reality, that guy doesn't really want her to leave. It's just sort of like part of his game. So she decides that instead of embarking on this train back to the city where she doesn't have a place to stay, she's going to stay in this beach town where she also doesn't have a place to stay, but she is pretty resourceful. So she decides that she's going to stay a couple of days in this beach town, let his mind cool off, and then she's going to surprise him for this huge Labor Day party that he throws every year. And we are pretty much following this character on her journey to self-destruction. We are watching her make horrible decisions. We're watching her mess up people's lives for absolutely no reason other than the fact that she really wants this rich man. And it is a time. It honestly felt like a book that you could almost read in one sitting because you don't want to look away even though you don't agree and you know that the things that this character is doing are wrong. You want to keep on watching and you want to see how far she's going to go with her plan. The thing about this book that is also very interesting is that this character manipulates people so much that as the reader you start questioning whether or not she's manipulating you. So till this moment, I there are certain things that this character tell us that I'm not sure if they're true or not because of the way that she is. This was fun. I enjoyed it. I had a good time reading it. Like I said, it's like a train wreck that you don't want to look away from. And it was a good way to remind me of how much I love these type of characters. Next, I read a book on my Kindle, which is why I have only my Kindle here. I read Old Enough by Hayley Jacobson. I actually vlogged my experience reading the next four books that I'm going to talk about, starting with Old Enough. So if you want to watch that, I will link it in the description down below. But essentially, this is a story about a very young bisexual woman who is in her sophomore year in college, maybe. And she's coming to the point in her life, which I honestly feel like is an experience that a lot of people can relate to, where she begins to feel like she is growing very, very far apart from the person she once was in high school. I feel like in college is the moment where we are introduced to so many people that really change our perspective on this world and we really start to form the person that we are actually going to become. And she's navigating the kid that she has outgrown, but with that comes also the fact that she might be outgrowing relationships that she fostered when she was a kid. And when her childhood best friend calls her to tell her that she is getting married and she wants her to be part of her wedding party, this girl sort of like spirals out of control. Because her and this best friend have grown so far apart from who they used to be that it's kind of difficult for our main character to really be in the presence of her best friend, especially given the fact that this best friend is very tied to an extremely traumatic experience she had when she was 16. So she's trying to navigate growing up. She's trying to navigate her trauma. And she's trying to navigate this really big event in the life of a person she thought was always going to be a part of her life. I loved this book. If you saw my vlog or if you watch my vlog, you will see that the ending of this book had me crying. And I think that the reason I loved it so much is because the author manages to tackle such difficult themes with so much gentleness and kindness. She's able to really process everything that this character is going through within these pages, but in a way in which you almost feel like you're going through this process with the character. It's like she's holding our hand, not in a way that she doesn't show us what it's like to deal with trauma. She does show us and it does talk about difficult topics, but she does it in a way that in the end, you feel like you can breathe again. It's, it's a very, very beautiful, very, very touching story. This book made me think back to so many things that happened to me when I was a teenager. It made me look back with so much more kindness and understanding to my younger self. And I really, really wish this book was around when I was like 22 because I truly feel like it would have 
changed the trajectory of my life a little bit and I definitely know that it would have changed the way I looked at myself at that point in my life. Next, also for that same vlog, I read Sugar Baby by Celine St. Clair, which is a book about this young woman called Agnes who has recently graduated from high school and she feels like she is like in a rut in life. She is not going to college just yet. She doesn't know if college is for her, but she lives in this very small, kind of shitty town. And on top of that, she also lives with her mom, who is this extremely religious person, and she cannot see herself growing inside of that town and inside of her mom's house. However, she doesn't have the money or the independency to do what she wants to do. She starts working this job as a cleaner alongside her mom one of their clients who is extremely rich has a younger daughter and she feels like very jealous of this girl because she seems to have the best of both worlds not only is she extremely beautiful she's also extremely rich and privileged because she gets to come to this town on the weekends just to lounge by the pool but during the week she's allowed to go back to London which is where she actually lives and this girl who is desperate to get out looks at this other girl and is like how is she able to live this life and I am stuck here but she strikes up a conversation with this girl and finds out that she is actually a sugar baby and this girl just invites her for a night out. She decides that she's gonna go on this night out with this girl and she slowly starts introducing this girl to her lifestyle and asks her if she would like to be a sugar baby. She's like, I can teach you because I am actually writing this book about sugaring and if you start off right now, it's actually really going to help me in the future. So she says yes and that's where the story begins. I feel like this book has some pros and cons. I think I gave it like 3.25 stars. I also just realized that I did not give any ratings for the other books that I read. So very quickly, I gave Old Enough 5 stars. I gave The Guest 3.25 and I gave Wrath also 5 stars which means that I might actually have 5 5 star reads in this video. It's pretty cool. Anyway, I gave this book around 3.25 stars because I feel like it does explore the like process of losing your innocence and shifting from girlhood to womanhood very very well. I also feel like it explores religious trauma in a very interesting way. I haven't read a lot of books that explore that theme so it was very interesting to read from this character's perspective but I do think that there were some things in this book that felt like were not explored as well as they could have been. I feel like there were some plot holes or some inconsistencies within the plot and there were a lot of moments that I felt like I had unanswered questions and that's not to say that I feel like every single book I read needs to be tied in a bow for me but I feel like there were things within the plot that contradicted each other and I was a little bit confused as I read this book. So I feel like if you are someone who wants to sort of like dip your toes in the like unhinged sad girl literature sort of world, I would say this is a good starting point but because I have read so many books within this subgenre, it is one of my favorite subgenres in literature, I feel like this book was a little bit for me. Next is another five-star read for me, which was Interesting Facts About Space by Emily Austin. Emily Austin is the author of another book I absolutely loved, which is Everyone in This Room Will Someday Be Dead. I feel like this woman cannot write something that is not five stars for me. This is a story about a very, very interesting main character. Her name is Enid, and she is absolutely obsessed with space hence the title. She also loves true crime podcasts and has a phobia of bald men and a problem with commitment. She's also dealing with a lot at the moment. Her absent father has passed away and his two daughters really want to have a relationship with her at the moment, which is not something she feels entirely ready for and not something that she knows 
if she really wants in her life but she feels like she needs to be nice and say yes to these girls her mother is not doing really well mentally and on top of all of that she is convinced that she has a stalker which i feel like every single girly that has once been obsessed with true crime podcasts has gone through that in their lives at least i hope i'm not speaking only for myself when i say that but i feel like emily austin has the ability to create these characters that are so complicated and so interesting and so relatable to me there are so many things in this character that I see in myself. I feel like with our mental health struggles, Emily Austin and I were like besties because we have the same messed up brain. And that's fantastic for me because before reading her books, I truly thought I was the only one. And I hope she knows she's not the only one because I understand the fears, the absurd fears that this character has. I understand her paranoia. I really, really understand the things that she goes through. And even though this book is not very plot-driven, is most definitely a character-driven book, it is such a fun and interesting and compelling story. When you reach the end, it is extremely satisfying. You feel like you've gone in this journey with this character and there are ups and downs in the story. It feels very much like real life. Uh, it was a very very interesting portrayal of mental health of anxiety of trauma of family trauma and how to navigate this world and how to find happiness even when you've been through so much i really truly enjoyed this book i read it in a day and i think you should read it too the last book I read for my vlog was Come and Get It by Kylie Reed. I listened to that one on audio. And I feel like the synopsis of this book doesn't really encapsulate what this book is about. I'm going to sort of tell you what the synopsis says anyway, but know that that's not really what you're going to encounter. It is, but it isn't at the same time. So we are essentially told that this is a book about Millie, who is working as a senior resident assistant in college. She has very, very high aspirations in life, and by all accounts, she's like this perfect employee, perfect student, perfect daughter, perfect everything. However, things really start to change when she meets this woman called Agatha Paul, who is both a professor in the college, but she's also doing interviews with residents of her like housing, I guess, that she takes care of uh, for an upcoming book she's going to write. And Agatha offers Millie a very unusual opportunity and she pretty much says yes. And this side hustle gets extremely messy and extremely complicated very, very fast. Especially because what this woman is asking of her involves spying on her own residence. And I feel like even though at its core this is what the story is about, it also feels like it takes us a very long time to get to that point in the plot. I feel like it's not until like the half point in the book that we get to that moment in the story. And what also I didn't realize is that we would be following so many different perspectives in this book. I thought we would only follow Millie because that's kind of what the synopsis suggests, but no. You are following pretty much every single character in the story and you are following them in the past, in the present, and it, it gets a little bit confusing. I feel like it took me a while to really understand the structure of this book and to understand the narrative that this author was exploring. I feel like once I did, and once I got to the halfway point, I did start to really enjoy my experience reading this book, but it took a while for me to get there. And I feel like the ending was kind of, mm, for me, at the same time that I liked it, I wasn't entirely happy with it. I don't think it's necessarily bad, but I feel like it's not what I was expecting and not necessarily in a good way. It feels a bit messy. It feels like this book could have benefited from being a little bit shorter and... I don't know. I, I hate saying this, but it could have been edited a little bit longer so that it's not as confusing for the reader. However, what I will say and what Kylie Reed is fantastic at doing, and she did that with such a fun age as well, she is so sharp 
and this book is witty, it's funny, it's sarcastic, it has commentary, and her voice really shines through her pages, which I really enjoyed. I think I also gave this one 3.25 or 3.5 stars. Next, I listened to the audiobook of a very popular book, which I am a little bit nervous about because I did not feel about this book the way most people do. And that book is The Housemaid by Frida McFadden. You have probably heard of this book before because it was an extremely popular release. I want to say one or two years ago. I don't remember when it came out. I just remember it being everywhere. This is a story about a woman who has really been struggling to find a job and eventually she gets hired to work as a maid for this extremely wealthy family. The husband in this family is a man called Andrew and by all accounts he seems to be this extremely successful businessman and a very very devoted husband. And it looks like he is trying his absolute best to just keep his family together because it feels like things are falling apart and this man is the only one that is trying to pull people from all directions and remind them of what it feels like to actually be a family. The wife, on the other hand, she's like a lot to deal with. The daughter is a lot as well, but the wife is like on another level. Her name is Nina and she's actually the one to hire the main character, so she is technically her boss. And she is like hot and cold constantly. Within like 10 minutes, she's going to tell you she loves you and then slap you in the face. And she's also like very convinced that the main character is trying to steal her husband, so she makes her life even more hell because of this. But because our main character cannot find a job anywhere else, she feels like she needs to stay working for this family. And I feel like overall this book was okay. I feel like I feel like it's a plot I've seen before. I feel like so many thrillers recently have this narrative of like a poor character who is forced to live with rich people. I feel like there are so many thriller books that follow that same idea and I feel like I'm getting tired of it because I just can never feel for a character when all that she has going for her is the fact that she's not as rich as the other characters in the story. But what truly bothered me about this book was that as we listen to the main character telling her story, she body shames her boss so much. It's like every 10 pages she talks about how she is not attractive enough to be married to this man. She talks about how she is like gaining weight and how she doesn't take care of herself and she's always talking about her appearance. She's always talking about her weight and I felt like that became so unnecessary throughout the book and I felt like it really took me away from the plot whereas like I feel like yes I understand that like women are sort of conditioned to compare themselves to other women especially physically but it felt very unnecessary for it to happen as often as it did. There was also this other character who is Italian and he was so sexualized and so stereotypical. It just felt like someone told a white woman to picture an Italian man and she just created this character. Because I was like, this character has nothing going on for him except for the fact that he looks like what a sexy Italian man would look like in your imagination. So I don't know. I feel like those points in the story really took me away from actually enjoying my experience reading it and unfortunately I did not feel about this book the way a lot of people feel. I think that the thriller itself was fine but I felt like those things took my enjoyment away from the story. So not for me. I will not be reading the second one. Next, I listened to another audiobook, which was phenomenal. I listened to the audiobook of A Woman Is No Man by Itaf Rum. And this is a story about a conservative Arab family living in Brooklyn. In the story, we are following two different point of views. The first one is of this young woman called Dea, who is 18 years old, and she's being forced by her grandparents to meet up with suitors, even though she really doesn't want to get married. She doesn't feel ready for it and her actual dream is to just go to college. The other point of view is of Dea's mother Ezra and her point of view happens in the past when she was forced to leave Palestine to get married to the father. Dea always believed her whole life that her parents died in a car accident but, but there is a mysterious visitor that comes to Dea and brings information to her that changes her perspective on her family 
forever. This book was so, so very powerful. The audiobook was incredible. If you are an audiobook fan, I truly recommend going with the audiobook for this one because it was extremely satisfying. It was so well done. You slowly start to fall in love and feel so deeply for the women in this family. It's also commentary on what it means to be a woman in this world that is ruled by men. And it was so, so touching. It's also, and I feel like at this time in history, it's so important for us to continue listening and remembering Palestinian stories because of everything that is happening in Gaza right now as we speak. I feel like the bare minimum that we can do as readers is read from Palestinian voices and bear witness to their stories and to the stories of their lives and all the beauty that those stories can bring into this world. And I feel like this story was at the end of the day extremely beautiful, so touching, it's, it, it was very interesting to see the places in which Dea and her mother's stories intersect, but also the ways in which they differ. I really enjoyed following both of those characters, and this one was an easy five-star read for me. I am definitely going to read more from this author. Next, I read a book that has the potential to become my favorite book of the year. I am not even joking. I know it's only January, but this book is like god tier for me from now on and that is betty by tiffany mcdaniel this is a coming of age story where we follow this extremely young cherokee girl named betty and we follow her journey as she grows up in the 50s in a mixed race family i would also say that this is partially historical fiction because these characters and these stories are based on tiffany mcdaniel's actual family so every single character in the story has either one existed at some point in history or still exist right now. We truly follow Betty as she sheds her innocence of this world and we watch her discover her love for the world at the same time that she discovers the violence that exists both within the world that we live but also inside her own family especially violence towards women and indigenous women. But at its core, I feel like this book is a love letter to the author's mother, who is Betty. And this book deals with a lot of violence. I truly think that you should check trigger warnings before getting into this book. It is no joke. Like, this is kind of like a little life where when you think things are going to get bad, they get even worse than you could have ever imagined. So... Do not take the trigger warnings in this book lightly because it is a really, really difficult read. But in my opinion, it is really, really worth it because I feel so honored to have bared witness of their story. I feel so honored to have seen this character grow. I feel like I know her. The author of this book posts a lot of pictures on her Instagram of her family of when they were younger. And every time I see one of those pictures, it makes me emotional because I felt so connected to these characters. And I almost feel like I am a little bit part of their family too. And I feel like this is a beautiful story about legacy about violence it is really sad but it's also filled with so much love and so much wonder and also beautiful writing i feel like there are certain books that i read that are so beautifully written that i get scared that like i won't remember the writing there were some passages in this book that i feel like i read like five times because i was forcing my brain to remember them because i did not want to forget the experience of reading this book i am not one to reread books but i feel like this is a story that i will revisit because i loved it just that much and i really really do think this book deserves more readers and more praise because it is so beautifully written. It's a story that deserves to be told. I am really grateful that this author decided to share this story with the world and it's truly going to live in my little heart forever. I really want to share a quote from this book that just shows how beautiful the writing is and just the tone of this story. It says, my father's hands were soil, my mother's were rain, no wonder they could not hold one another without causing enough mud for two. And yet, out of that mud, they built us a house that became a home. I love this book. Love, love, love this book. And 
if you think you'd be okay with the triggers in the story read it because i promise you that it will live inside your little heart and just like that we have come to the last book in this video which is day tripper by fabio moon and gabriel ba this is a graphic novel it was also my book club's pick for the month of january and honestly i am so thankful that the members of my book club brought this to my attention because i had never heard of it before but I am so happy that I read it and you can read this in one sitting. It's super, super fast. And also the art is very, very beautiful as well. In the story, we are following Bras, who is the child of a very, very famous Brazilian author. He dreams of becoming a writer himself, but he's sort of like in a rut in life. And he's currently working as a writer for obituaries. And every day he dreams about the day in which his life will finally begin. Each chapter in this graphic novel is a different important moment in this character's life, but at the end of each chapter something pretty tragic happens. And while you're reading the story, you don't really understand where it's going or what is the point of those things happening in the end until you reach the very last like two chapters and that's when you really understand what this author is trying to say and the message that sorry the authors are trying to give you this is at its core a book about life and death but also about how unexpected life can be and how we never truly know when our last day on earth is going to be so i feel like the overall message that I got from this book was that instead of waiting for the day in which your life is going to become, instead of waiting for the day in which you're finally going to accomplish something you've been waiting for for years, you can start living your life right now because there are so many little things that make life worth living. There are so many people in your life that make life worth living and that those are the things that we should really be living for because when we leave this earth, that's all that is going to matter. And I feel like this book was a reminder that yes, life is like this. It happens like this. Life is unexpected. Life can be very, very hard at times, but it's also really, really worth living. And that we should be living as authentically as we can every day because we never know when it's going to be our last. And that doesn't necessarily have to be something bad. So yes, those were the 10 books I finished reading in January. I feel like I have been talking for such a long time. In fact, I have been talking for 46 minutes. So I was going to give you my reading stats for January, but I feel like I've already rambled for long enough. So I'm going to give you a summarized version of my reading stats and not every single stat that I have. If you watch this till the end, let me know if stats is something you're interested in because my nerdy brain loves graphics and stats, but I don't know if that's something everyone wants to see. So this month I read a total of 10 books. I read 3,766 pages. My favorite book was Betty, of course. 20% of the books that I read were literary fiction, 50% were contemporary fiction, 10% were fantasy, 10% were thriller, and 10% was graphic novels. Every single book I read were fiction books. I did not read a single nonfiction book this month. Every single book I read was for an adult audience. I read 30% of my books on audio and 70% of my books on a physical copy. I read six books from my physical TBR. I read three books from my library and I read one book from NetGalley. 50% of the books that I read had queer representation and 50% had no queer representation. And as for authors' nationalities, I read 10% of my books by Palestinian author, 10% by British, 10% by Brazilian, and 70% American. 80% of my books had mental health representation and 20% did not have any representation. And these were the ethnicities of the authors that I read this month. So there we have it. All of the books that I read, all of my reading stats. This was such a good reading month. I am honestly really excited for February because if it keeps going this way, I feel like 2024 will be a really, really good reading year. Thank you so much for sticking with me till the end. Thank you for watching this video. Let me know in the comments if you have read any of these books, if you have a book recommendation for me, or what was your favorite book that you read in January. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing to my account if you haven't already, and I will see you on my next video. Bye-bye.